Hi guys, Spartan765 here today. I'm just doing a video review on a gun I picked up recently. Um, and that is the AMT Hardballer. As uh, some of you may know or some of you may not know, this is one of the, uh, I'm not saying it's the first, but it is one of the very first 1911s produced all stainless steel. Um, now, when you hear the term all stainless steel, that means all of the core main components of the firearm are stainless steel. They can be stainless steel, obviously with the exception of the springs, because you can't really make a good stainless steel spring. Um, now, these guns are considered moderately collectible. Uh, the company started making 1911s in uh, 1977 and went out of business in 2002 to do a lawsuit um, they made a full stainless steel version of the Ruger uh, Mark II, um, and they got sued by Ruger for that, and they got screwed. Um, but their their prime time of production was between like 1980 and like 1985 through like 87, I think. That's just what I've read. Um, this particular firearm here was made in 1984. Um, these are great 1911s for what they are. Um, I picked this one up for 500 bucks. found it at a local gun shop. Um, I mean, one thing about these, though, is uh, that may turn a lot of people away, is that these are cast frames, cast slide 1911s. Now, um, these are quite a bit more durable um, than any other cast 1911, because not only they're made out of stainless steel, which is a little bit harder than... Uh, you know, there's several different grades of steel, but just as a baseline weapons grade steel, which is still a broad term, term cast stainless or stainless steel is still a couple uh, Rockwell hardness levels above that. Um, now these are cast under they're die cast, obviously under a uh, high pressure. Um, they're not a low pressure or gravity cast. Um, they're high pressure, uh, so that means that the density is is dense as it can possibly get for a cast gun. I mean, in comparing this to my, uh, I, this is my only cast 1911 I have, my other ones are all forged, obviously. Um, the weight is, you can't even tell the difference. They seem like they weigh about the same, so that's a good indicator to me that the density is, is there. Um, the gun probably had about a thousand rounds to it, I'm guessing, from when I bought it. Um, the barrel was good, everything was good on it. Took it to the range, uh, the only thing I realized was having some failure to feeds. But that's just because this 1911 is a 1911A1 um, and has the uh, internal extractor. Uh, which, you know, those need to be tweaked periodically here and there. Um, but after I tweaked the extractor a little bit, she was fed reliably, 300 rounds, not one issue. Um, this gun does not have the original extractor that came with it, and the grips are not original. Um, these have the uh, originally had the Colt style gold cup grips that. that where the rubber went around the front part of the grip and it had the little emblem there except the instead of saying Colt on it or had the Colt horse uh, emblem it had it says, just says AMT. Um, eh, it's not that big of a deal for me I just wanted one of these more or less just to have them. Um, these by far nowadays are not the best stainless steel 1911s you can buy. Um, Colt also now makes a full stainless steel version of this. This is just a uh, uh, stainless steel copy of the uh, Colt Gold Cup um, 1911, which they later, after AMT produced a full stainless version, they then produced a stainless full stainless version as well. Uh, they do have fully adjustable rear sights, um, seem to work well. The gun is fairly accurate. Um, I've noticed I'm able to do about three inches at 25 meters with this gun, uh, using 230 grain ammo indoor range. Um, I mean, it's after you get the sight sight tweaked a little bit, it, it, three inches. I mean, the groups were standard. They were varying. My tightest group was about two inches. My widest group was about four and a half. Um, after I got her all, all the issues worked out of it with the extractor and everything like that. Just got a few mags through, you know, to get used to it. Um, but they're decently accurate um, for what they are, which is nice. Um, they do have a staked front sight, but this it's dual staked, and it's pretty heavy duty as far as the staking goes. It's not like some of the Springfield 1911s that have a staked front sight post where they'll come loose after a while and you have to restake them. These are very durable, which is nice. But if you ever find one of these and you're interested, go ahead and pick one up. 
I mean, I got mine for 500, which is a pretty decent decent deal. They go anywhere between about 475 and 650 on Gun Broker if you see them. Um, anyway, uh, comments, questions, feel free to send me a message. Spartan 765 out.